the first quarters of 2016, made that I'll try and if it doesn't work, I'll take the other one. Thank you. Okay. So 2016 data, the, the first quarters, and you, and you see we have this growth rate again. We have uh, nearly 10% of, of uh, growing. I must say this is only fresh products because we use this TFK household to panel data that I've to uh, told about before. And, uh, we have a wide range of products, but we don't have the home market. We have uh, all the fresh producers, which is which you see there: fruit, vegetables, potatoes, and um, meat, poultry, eggs, cheese, bread, uh, um, dairy. All, all these products are in there, which about which are about two thirds of the market. So these two thirds can already give quite a good um, view. And you see again that these sales channels discounters, supermarkets, and the natural food stores are the ones who are driving the market. And this is how um, this German organic market looks like, by uh, uh, product groups. And you see it's really dominated by fresh products. It's different. So if you would have uh, the conventional market, Beside it, then you would see that uh, on the conventional market, about half of the uh, sort of, uh, sales value would come from the dry products, and meat and meat products would have a much higher share than it ha they have in the organic market. And one of the driving forces are this one's fruit and vegetables, which have about one uh, fourth of the market, and then milk, dairy, and cheese, and then you see the Meat. This is strange. Meat and meat products, and then the bread and bakery. And this is what we, the, the other things. What I call dry products are everything coming from cereals and everything. I mean, packaged, packed food, having an EA and cold. But we don't have this detailed data. Of, so it's also juices. It's also called dry products, but um, it's it's everything. What is missing there? And these are the shares of uh, sort of the, those products. And you see, there are some products that have really high shares. Um, the blue uh, thing is uh, always in volume and the uh, orange in value. So you see that already 11% of all the eggs in Germany are organic, and uh, and they make about 20% of the the sales value of it. And there are some products that have quite low percentages, which is meat, because it's always a little bit behind. And the other ones have, yeah, you can see it, like 6 and 5 percent. And of course, what you also see is that the, that the share of value is always higher because of the higher prices, quite clear. Okay, and this is um, also a view on the first quarters of this year again, how, on, on the growth rates. And you see there are some really very dynamic products at the moment. This is poultry and oils, potatoes also, but this is um, because there was a very low harvest in the, in the last year. Oh, and others that are not growing so much anymore, but for meat, for example, there's a real shortage uh, in, in pork meat, and that's why, of course, if there's no pork, you can't sell it. And, this is, and also for fruit and vegetables, of course, it always depends on harvest and how much there is on the German production and also on the Spanish and Italian production. And this might be interesting for you as well, because these are the surpluses on the consumer prices. And they are really different. And people are always asking, how much more is that actually cost? Does that actually cost in, in the shops? And there's no um, general number. You could say it's really different. For example, for the chicken, you pay nearly three times that what a conventional chicken would cost. And consumers are ready for, to pay that. They are willing to pay it because they 
they know the difference and they know how the animals are kept and so on. And also for the eggs, it's always two, it's also two and a half times the price they are ready to pay. And this is what you can use, this readiness, because people are aware of, of uh, the advantages of the organic products. And there's also some products which have really low surpluses, like bananas or their or the carrots. These are these are products that, um, on one hand, have a high organic share already, which is, um, maybe because they are not that expensive. But um, and there are also products that are already expensive in the conventional market, like the like the beef. And then the surpluses are not as high as, as for other products. So what you see. It's possible with the right story behind it. It's always possible. And now the production in Germany. So, so we have this really high, um, very dynamically growing market. And on the other hand, we have a quite uh, slow uh, growing of, of the organic area over the last years. And now this actually has changed a bit. So we have the, the area is growing again. It has grown in 2015 by nearly 4%, but for 2016 we expect still a higher growing, especially there will be much more dairy cows and much more grassland, especially in the south. So there will be more area coming, but not so much for these all those products that we need. So there will be, of course, we need more milk and dairy products. Yes, this, this will be... Yeah, this demand can be fulfilled then much more from, from the, our production. But um, there's not so much new cropland and not so much new fruit and vegetables and all those things that we actually would also need. So this is uh, our land use. This looks very similar to that, to the whole European land use actually. So we have more of half like flat, something like 55 or 1 percent of grassland, and then cropland is 445,000 hectares, and of those, most of it is cereal, the main production um, direction, and then we have all these cereals growing here. So we have wheat and quite a lot of rye, which is traditionally in Germany, but it's also um, because we have many area in the north eastern um, regions of Germany where we have very um, light soils and then the rye is growing. So it's actually the first, no, the second time that we have more wheat than rye. It was always the other way around the other years. But wheat is of course uh, the cereal that people want and need for bread and for feeding. And this is the animal production in Germany. Um, and you see here that we have very different sh shares. The sheep and goat meat has a really high share, but but I have to say it is it is actually there, but it's not sold on the organic market. It is much more sold in restaurants, in yeah, like regional specialties and Sometimes there's the organic label on it and sometimes not. So it may be a situation that you also know from, from your beef meat here in Estonia. But we have a high share also for eggs, nearly 9%, and for the beef with 4%. And this is because also, and, and not such a high share for pork, because we have a big pork producer in the conventional market and we export one third of our pork is exported in the conventional market and it's very cheap, uh, very, very cheap and then the, it's just uh, difficult to, yeah, uh, to develop this, this pork market because it's, this is much more expensive to produce like, you know, organic pork and it's, the conversion to organic is takes such a long time and so on. And the poultry has a share of 1%, which could be also higher. But, it, but these are the two products the, um, which are very, very cheap in the conventional market and where you have to pay this high surplus. So that's why it's 
going comparatively slow. So, and now um, I show you I, I show you our production, and of course um, I also have to show you our imports because we are really depending on imports in the organic market. And what we see here is the imports of raw material and fresh produce. We don't see the imports on, um, on processed products or semi-processed products because we just uh, don't have it in our statistics. And that's why we can show you this. So you see that nearly all of the sunflower seeds and soybeans are imported. Even products that could be produced in Germany are imported a lot, like field peas. Yeah, and we, because there's a high demand for, for our animals to feed, for feed production. And do you know who's the main um, delivery country for field peas? No? It's uh, one of your neighbors, it's Lithuania. <laughs> mm. and, uh, and we import oats, which also could be interesting then for you. And then, which is really clear, is uh, that we import fruit and vegetables, that we import bananas, this is for sure. <laughs> but we also import peppers and tomatoes and all those uh, nice uh, fruit and vegetables that you can see there, because we, we just don't have them during winter time. But we also import them during our season, because there's not enough. Of course, con consumers prefer always the regional food vegetable, but if there's not enough of it, then uh, we import it. And we also import quite a lot of carrots and onions and, and apples. Um, <laughs> so there are chances, I would say, and they, they come from the neighboring countries, these onions and carrots and, um, and apples. So the onions and carrots mainly from the Netherlands and uh, the apples from Italy and so on. Um, from Estonia, maybe. <laughs> and for the animal products, it looks like this. So we also import quite a lot of dairy products we do, because we has, still have a shortage of milk, but it, that will be changing from next year. That's why I wouldn't um, suggest you to go into a diary if somebody, needs, if some, if somebody thinks of it. We will have really a lot of more milk from next year, from the end of 2017 on. So I wouldn't start that unless you have a real special good product that you can tell a story about it and, and everything. But not to deliver it to the uh, yeah anonymous uh, raw material uh, market. And, um, we also import some beef and pork, pork mainly from the Netherlands and from Denmark, and we import some beef, which is mainly cold cows for minced meat, and um, which is not from Argentina, also, but also from the neighboring countries. But it's done later on in detail. So, and now some, and, and now I want to have a look on the. European market, or are there still some questions on the German market? No. <laughs> okay, this is data from 2014 still, because the collation has not been finished yet from the 2015 data. And um, that's why there's a number, another data here. But you see, of course, as you know, Germany is the biggest market in Europe, but it's not the biggest market um, if you look at the uh, euro per person, if the spending per person, then we have really markets with much higher shares, which is Switzerland in Denmark, and these two countries are actually the, the leaders um, if you look at the share of organic food. So Germany has 5% and, and uh, these have 8% and 7%, so quite a higher level. And here you see that the markets grow, but area also grew, but not in that extent uh, like 
like the markets. So we have European ways looked at the same picture actually that we have a much higher growing a much higher growing market than than the production is rising. And we have also a similar picture looking at these uh, grassland and cropland and that the more, of, more than half of the area is grassland and then we have some cropland. And we have, uh, because there are so many southern European countries in, in, uh, in Europe, we have much, a much higher share of permanent crops, all the fruits and nuts and uh, olives and so on. Okay. And this picture is mainly, it's more or less the same for Estonia. Also, you have lots of grassland and you have uh, less than half of it is, is cropland. And uh, the main land use for, for the cropland is feed, and then comes the cereals. And the main cereal is, is oats. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, those figures, but um, so you have also uh, quite some extensive production here on the grassland with the beef and sheep on it. And um, so these are, as, as you know, the main production. The Estonian organic market, I mean, there's some old uh, figures, but I put them here because I don't have any new, newer ones, which were that the market was worth 22 million euro a few years ago already, and uh, and you import a lot and you export a lot. So you import also for your organic shops. You import fruit and vegetables and you export um, cereals mainly, as far as I heard. Can I tell tell this figure? <laughs> so <laughs> Mary just just told me that you that you export um, 50 million. Euro, so um, and half of it was cereals, and there's of course quite a lot of other products that are exported, but also the dominated um, product that's exported is cereals at the moment. What I would suggest to you is first, what you probably already do is develop your internal market. Look at the internal market first. Look what what can be sold here, and look at um, these. Use these major trends that I've written down here. Use that people want regional food. Use that they want fair food, fair produced food, and use that they want seasonal food. I mean, I, I've seen so many uh, restaurants that really and here is in Tallinn that say use regional and seasonal food. And so my my uh, impression is that people want that, and people also give money for it if they have. Here, fruit from here, and um, so I first would try to use that, and then look at the exports. And when looking at the exports, there are actually two main reasons, uh, two main directions, I would say. So you have to decide: Do you want to be a deliverer of raw material um, or semi-processed? material on delivered into this big German or whatever market. This is possible, there's big demand for it and especially for serious protein crops, it is possible, but then you are really in a high competitive competitive market um, and you and you could earn could earn money on it of course. And um, what is the one possibility and the other one I would also see is you are developing a Estonian brand or to deliver fine Nordic food specialties and then tell a story of it, tell the naturality of the Estonian nature and, te um, and tell people on the west coast they they are not aware of that Estonia is being a 
individual country and they they are not I mean you probably are faced with it all the time that people are in, in Germany are not that they, they don't know Estonia so you have to tell the story behind it if you have to see you have to sell landscape and people and this feeling and then you can end up in, in this market is, uh, and that's and then take the steps Kevin just told you to, to, to be more practical and to get um, <coughs> Kevin was talking about and you go to maybe to Biofach um, and then and then present your product and present your story and then uh, try to get it listed there. And what's becoming much more important to all the processors and all in, in Germany is traceability. It's really a big issue because there have been so many fraud frauds this last time, not from Estonia, but in Romania and in the Ukraine and five years ago in Italy. And that's why frauds where conventional products were sold as organic and that's why they really are much more keen on um, knowing from where this product is coming from and not just having a certificate. I mean, there are these traders as well, they who only want a certificate, but many of them really look for direct contacts and for long-term partnerships and then they know that they also can get put up products the next Two, five, whatever, ten years, and um, they there are enough of those. And I would really just for your own planning also suggest you to, to look for those, and you can have longer contracts for I would say ten, five years, and not only sell everything on the spot market. I mean, this can be good sometimes, but the next year you really make losses on it, and that's probably which you also don't want. Okay, and then I would talk about some chances I would see. And um, I would say chance number one would be beef. I mean, I've seen that you have so many beef in, in Estonia. We already visited some beef cattle farm here, and then, which is not sold organically. And um, we also have the situation. We also have beef that is not sold organically in the, in Germany, but it's always due to distributional things actually that the farms are just too far away to collect the animals, and then they are just sold on the convention to the conventional trader, and that's it. And here, if you again, if you co cooperate. And uh, if you work with your neighboring farm, and then you can organize yourself together, and then have a certain number of animals that can be sold together, then it would be worthwhile. And you can think of not of not maybe selling meat cuts, and not not the whole or the half of the animal. Slaughter it here, and then or may, and even better, make some product out of it. Because what you see here is uh, Denmark is the most important uh, beef deliverer at the moment. And these are all uh, um, these are old cows that are sold to Germany because there's a really high demand on um, minced meat. Germany is the main main product actually on the meat market because it's also because it's cheap. And you see, these are the shares and sales volume and then sales value of the, the different meat products in Germany and they are still quite low compared to the other ones and um, that's why there's there's a market and it's not only here it's also this minced meat market is an anonymous uh, market but if you you could also um, Try and selling breeding cattle, or you can try and sell um, special specialties. What you have here, I, I've heard about the beef jerky, the dry meat that is produced here, and there, there are possibilities. 
just to show you that Germany is really not one of the biggest big players in the beef market. Um, there are other ones. Anastomia is here with 19,000 um, beef for meat production. So that would be a possibility. And these are the prices. I mean, this is of course difficult to, to export live animals to Germany because of the transport costs. But just to give you an orientation, um, and you see that you get for the organic young bulls and high first and oxes now about four, four euro forty, four euro fifty. So it's um, not too bad. Also, the the cows get a much higher prices because the they are also asked for the minced meat. And what you see here is that uh, also the, the organic price is really independently developing now. It's, uh, it doesn't, they are not, not fixed anymore. Like, like they were here, here you can see people got uh, surpluses, but now these are two different markets.